Hi, I'm Adam with Let Us Try That, and today we're going to be making low-carb, keto-friendly chocolate chip cookies. Now, I have a confession to make. I have an addiction. I'm addicted to chocolate chip cookies. But with this recipe, I can indulge those cravings without guilt because it's low-carb and keto-friendly. So these cookies may actually be healthy. Anyway, I can eat these without breaking my low-carb lifestyle, my low-carb or keto way of eating. So we can make delicious cookies and still stay on track. So to make this recipe, we're going to need almond flour, coconut flour, beef gelatin, an egg, salt, baking powder, vanilla extract, erythritol, liquid stevia, and butter. Of course, I almost forgot to mention with chocolate chip cookies, we're also going to need some chocolate chips. So I'll be adding those in. Now, if there are any of these ingredients that you don't have at your local grocery store, I'll be putting links to where you can get them to in the description below this video. So for things like the beef gelatin, possibly the low carb chocolate chips, things like that, there will be links below this video. You're going to need two bowls. Um, these are pretty much the same size, but if one's larger than the other, we'll start with the smaller one and we'll start by putting in some almond flour. And we'll need one and a quarter cups of almond flour. There's one. And a quarter. And we'll also need one and a half tablespoons of coconut flour. So there's half, there's one, and there's one and a half. Next we'll add one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. So there's half, there's one, and there's one and a half. The next ingredient is a quarter teaspoon of salt. So I'm not going to bother measuring, I'm just going to put a little dash of salt in there. And now we'll need three teaspoons of beef gelatin. The gelatin is important because it gives it sort of a chewiness that you would expect in a cookie. Without the gelatin, it's very, very crisp. Now I like a crisp cookie, you bite into it and it breaks apart, but it's super, super brittle without the beef gelatin. One, two, three. So with this recipe, the cookies are still going to be, once they cook and then they cool completely, so I like them even better the next day actually, but they will be kind of crispy when you bite into them and still have a little bit of chew on the inside. And they're really good. So now we'll just whisk that together a little bit and then we'll start adding the other ingredients into the other bowl. So in this bowl, we're going to mix half a cup of erythritol and six tablespoons of butter. So that's a quarter cup. I'm getting low on this bag. I think that's pretty much uh, the rest of the bag there. It's going to be a half a cup. We'll get a few of these out of the way. And we need six tablespoons of butter. Now on the wrapper, it's got measurements. So six tablespoons is right there. I've had this butter out overnight, so it's very soft. Oh, 
Okay, so I want to mix the erythritol and the butter together. We'll get this out of the way. And you can do this with a spatula or a spoon, but I'm going to go ahead and use a hand mixer. We'll just mix this up until it's well blended. So next we'll add an egg, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and 30 drops of liquid stevia. So there's our egg. The very large bottle of vanilla extract, because that's how they do it at Costco. Everything in bulk. So there's a teaspoon of vanilla extract and then 30 drops of liquid stevia. All right, there's 30 drops and we'll mix that some more. So next we'll add the dry ingredients to the wet ingredients. We'll mix that some. We'll add in the chocolate chips and mix it some more. Some chocolate chips. Not much left in this bag, but I do have another bag ready. I don't bother measuring the chocolate chips. I just kind of eyeball it, put in as many as I think I will need. So I'll mix that up some more. Okay, now that everything's well mixed, I'm going to unplug this for safety before I start sticking my fingers in there. I want to get all the dough out of my little blender attachments here. But with this dough, I'm going to put this in the refrigerator for about 10 minutes. And that's also a good time to start preheating the oven. So I'll preheat the oven to 350 and right around the time that's preheated, I can take this out and start putting them on a cookie sheet. Okay, the oven is preheated. The dough has been chilling in the refrigerator for a little while. Now it's time to start loading the dough onto the baking sheet. Now you could grease your baking sheet with butter. You could spray it with cooking oil or you can line it with a piece of parchment paper. And we're just going to scoop the dough approximately a tablespoon at a time. And then put a little dough ball onto the baking sheet. And we want to space out each dough ball a couple of inches apart. And we'll just repeat this until the baking sheet is full. So this recipe makes approximately 20 cookies, but if you make some a little bigger than others, like mine, you see I made 18 cookies. Now if I wanted to, I could pull a little bit from some of the bigger ones and make an extra cookie, but it doesn't really matter too much to me. But now that I've started, I kind of got to finish it. So I'll make one more. 
out of some of these bigger ones. So there, I ended up with 19 cookies. And we can squish these down a little bit. Not too much, but into something like that, like a little cookie shape. Then after we're done squishing them down a little bit, they go into the oven for about 14 to 16 minutes. And you can just keep an eye on them and when they look done, pull them out. So 350 degrees for 14 to 16 minutes. All right, into the oven they go and then we'll take them out and have a look when they're done. All right, my oven just beeped, or the timer beeped, so now they're ready to come out. And you can see they're kind of golden brown, and they look ready, so you'll be able to tell pretty easily when they're ready. So they'll certainly cool off faster on a wire rack than they will on the baking sheet. And that's a good thing because I'm anxious to eat them, but they need to cool first. So I'm going to let them cool for a little while, then I'm going to dig in. So that's how we make keto friendly, low carb chocolate chip cookies. Now these may not taste exactly like what you're used to if you're eating cookies, regular cookies with white flour and sugar and all of that but they are pretty darn good. I like them quite a bit. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. If you try these, leave a comment and let me know if you liked it. If you don't like it, go ahead and leave a comment and let me know. I'd be interested to hear your opinions if you try this recipe. I think it's pretty good, but everyone's taste is a little bit different. Anyway, that's it for this video. If you wanna help me out, it would be great if you could share this video on social media, Twitter, Facebook, email, whatever. Go out on the street and tell people. Go door to door and knock and tell them they should watch this. Anyway, I hope you like these cookies as much as I do. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.